Pública. Hello everyone, this is Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am Primus Hutchinson. On our program today, I'm joined by a gentleman who has quite an intriguing story to tell. He's from the community of Jackwell, the hub of the Rosa Valley, and the history of the valley, as many of you would probably know, is one often associated with a myriad of social challenges, albeit to a much less extent in recent times. This gentleman was able, like many of his time, to battle successfully hurdles of such magnitude that he often ascribed his accomplishments to divine intervention. Today, he is the founder and chief executive officer of a successful construction company. But our interest is not the success of his company, but his resilience, his commitment, tenacity, and philanthropic spirit. The gentleman I speak of is none other than Mr. Steve Jameson of Jim Cobb's Quality Construction Limited. Welcome to Issues of Answers, Mr. Jameson. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Let us start off with your life growing up as a young man. How was it? From the community of Jack Mill, um, we, have, we have 14 siblings. I'm the number fourth in it. And my mother, a farmer, my father, a farmer. We raised in the farming area. And for me, I decided, you know what, I want to do something different. Uh, I decided to, to um, go to Trinidad when I was 19. Um, in that time, I had a cousin living up there that was married to a, to a, to a Trinidadian. Um, I think the, the whole idea of she took me up there really was to take care of help her to take care of her, of, oh. her, of her kids, really. It wasn't an idea she had for me where she wanted me to develop myself. But you know, um, Steve Jameson is Steve Jameson. I, I got a job. the came out sweet. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I, I got a job with, with a gentleman from Grenada as a, as a helper. Um, meeting this guy, for some reason, this guy see more in me than I even thought. Within the first six months, this guy bring me as a, as a supervisor. In those days, trust me, I was so skinny. Like, if you see me today, my frame, you could still see I have a bossy back, <laughs> you know? But I was so skinny, and I had a crew of, of maybe 13, say 14 guys. And I was the youngest. I want to just hold that thought a minute. So yeah. let's get back to the family. Um, you started growing up with your siblings and so on. And um, what was in your mind at the time? I mean, you grew up humble, humble beginnings. You know, um, you you did you know just menial work here yeah. and there in the beginning. Take us from yeah. that experience okay. up yeah. to Trinidad. Of course. Um, before the Trinidad, well, the fourteen sibling, my mother, my father was doing the farming. But on their spare time, they would do, they would bake, they would be selling bread. I, I do exactly everything my other sibling was doing. There was nothing different from me and them. We eat the same food, we do, we do everything I like. And so your mom and your parents were very strict in that. And my mother, my father, you know, <laughs> the story would be sometime on our way, when we go to bed, I would, um, me and my brothers will talk about how we're going to steal a few bread. <laughs> and you know, and, and, and most time, in those days, you have your, your um, pyjama, you know, um, they have pockets. Right. So, boy, we, we take a few breads, we put it in our pocket. Sometimes we fall asleep, and the bread remains in our pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so next morning, when my mother passed, the leaks first because <laughs> somehow she got into to know no, that, you stole bread. that we stole bread. <laughs> and that was it. That was the whole story. My father was the type of person who I always tell people my father was the loving one. My mother was the tough one who would say, 
Very disciplined. Yeah, very disciplined. My father was disciplined as well. But my father would uh, allow you with father lenient, you know? lenient. But yeah. my mother, boy, I tell you, my mother will, you will get it. Okay. You know. So this is how we raise we, we, uh, good family. Um, I, I cannot, I cannot recall I do anything different in those days. But did you have an interest in construction at this early stage? Yeah, yeah. Um, funny that I was like the boy everybody likes in the community. community likable person. So, um, in those days, a lot of latching, they were building latching. Yeah, that's what it is when... I get, I mean, I get so technical in building latching. I would uh, think how to put the exhaust for the air to go out. Right, yeah. I would, uh, I would uh, design it with particular louver around it, you know. So, I got master in building latching for the whole area where I was living. And, um, for some reason, I missed that. Yeah. I, I don't know why I didn't capture you, it. You <laughs> anyway. see, yes. Yeah. Um, there was this man named like Gilead, Anella. They called me names like Dudu Mama, E Love. I had all the loving you know, names. Loving names and, and, and like the blessed boy. They treat me even today. Those that are still alive, yes. when they see me, to see the kind of smile on their face, the kind of way they blush, and uh, because they are happy seeing from, me, yeah. that what I from changed where from, from where to I was to today. So I feel I, I felt, you know, like a blessing. What about your early education? You, you went to the Jackmel School. Yeah, I went to the primary school in Jackmel um, in those days. And that's the school I did. Because of the, again, because of the most challenge. Children, most children. Yeah, yeah because of uh, the challenge. My yes. mother have 14 of us to take care of. So that's why I went to school, in the primary school okay. in Jackmel. So we're moving from there into Trinidad. You, mm -hmm. you decided. But how did that work out? Um, did, were, you, were you contacted by your, your relative in Trinidad? How did you make that? Or were you not thinking yeah, of traveling yeah. at all, were you? Yes. Just maybe two months ago, I get to know why I end up was went to Trinidad, and the purpose of I end up being going to Trinidad was exactly to take care of my cousin children. But she never told me that. She came down from Trinidad to bring another one, which is um, another cousin, to take her, her to Trinidad. But when she came to St. Lucia, the young lady was pregnant. And for some reason, she, got, she was hesitating to go. Right. So at the same time, I guess I was vulnerable enough. I was there. She just picked me up and said, let's uh -huh. go. And I thought it was an opportunity for me as well. Because what I was doing in St. Lucia, like the latrine and the little things, I mean, I know I can do better. I can do a lot better. So hearing about Trinidad would be a fantastic idea that it would help me to develop to reach where I am. Um, again, I always believe that the education side of me, that I didn't get this opportunity to be who I wanted to be. So I always want to grow to be better. So getting the opportunity to go to Trinidad, I say, boy, you know what? Yeah, that's okay. That chance I will get to go to school. And that's how I ended up going to Trinidad. So tell us a little bit about the experience. You started telling us about yeah, yeah. the construction phase. Yeah. I mean, in a matter of six weeks, yeah. you happened to be... Yeah. You, um, within record time, I, I was a supervisor on a site with about 14, 12, 13 men. And I was the, the, the youngest. And I was... In fact, I was green. But when it comes to business, I all, from very young age, I take business serious. I... And the owner of the construction company sees something in me where he believe I will have him to lead them. So very early age, I, I become supervisors and I was handling a crew of men. What age was that around the time? That would be like, I was 19. I was like 19. Okay. Um, we'll take a short break. Um, that will give you enough time to think of all the other developments yeah. surrounding your, your, your sure. personal life and so on. This is... Issues and Answers. We'll be back in just a minute. So you had a good time? I did. The food was amazing. I'm definitely going to come back here. Happy you enjoyed it? I did. 
So what's the, what's it like tomorrow? Tomorrow we have a meeting. We have a matter to discuss. Oh really? down you driving too fast speak up and speak out if your life or the lives of others are in danger drive safe or drive alive welcome back this is issues and answers my guest is the executive uh, Chief Executive Officer and uh, Founder of Jim Cobb's Quality Construction Limited, Mr. Steve Jimson. And uh, he's telling us all about his life experiences, uh, challenges, and developments, and so forth. Um, we won your, your Trinidad experience, yeah. and you as a young guy, 19 year old, 19 years. as a supervisor. Um, yeah. And um, how was the, the response, your, your co workers and your subordinates, and so on? Always as he being a serious person, not bull bullshitting, not taking stories. I did very well because my level of tolerance for nonsense was almost to zero. So, and I know what I wanted. So because of that, very early I did well as a supervisor. Now, being a supervisor with this particular company, maybe for a year, I get I was so knowledgeable in the field of construction, I started getting private projects in, Trinidad, in right. Trinidad to start building on the build, um, the, like you build a two-story building, the ground floor, which have a slab over it already. I get several of those projects. To without any formal training at all? Without any, well, since I was a supervisor, yeah, yeah. that means I had known something. Something. Yeah. But I didn't have nothing. Constructive or such. Yes. Okay. And people really trust me. And if you have to go to Trinidad and you go around those projects that I did in Trinidad, you might be, see, well, from a very tender age, this guy likes to do things well. Because trust me, I don't sleep. If I did something wrong, I don't sleep. It, you want it, it corrected. Yeah, you, it you make bothers sure me. Yeah. And I don't understand how people doing things and, and, and they're just doing things because they're supposed to have a, a method of how you do things. And the person who's spending their money, go to the bank and take their money and give to you, expect the best of what you're very doing. True, very true. But yeah. somehow in that industry, you find a lot of people just, just, just taking it as a joke. Now, yeah. you, you, you've been doing well in Trinidad, and you decided that you should re return home. Why didn't you decide? Why didn't you remain in Trinidad and, and you know, take advantage of the possibilities? Uh? I'm one of those who believe that my island, I love here. I love St. Lucia. And I believe if I am knowledgeable, I should share that with my country. If I can do so well for other people outside of the world, I think I should explore that in St. Lucia. The challenges have been here, but yet still, I have got, gotten good opportunity to go overseas and work. Um, as far as Bulgaria, I got good opportunities to move out from St. Lucia. And yet still, I'm the looking at St. Lucia. Home, yeah, man, I, love, I, love, I love seeing that. I'm in the boulevard, you pass and said, Jameson did a job for me 10 years ago, and it's thoughtless. It's, it's the same way he, he built it today, 10 years, no cracks on my wall, nothing. That gave me joy. Okay. So how long you stayed in Trinidad before returning home? Three, three and a half years. Yeah. Okay. So tell us, well, tell us about your experience now that you're back home. Yeah. Um, when I get back to St. Lucia, my mother, Fanny, Flory Jameson, my father, Joseph, Joe, um, when I came back, they realized... They're both my, alive now? It's no, my father passed. Since the six, but, okay. Yeah, but my mother's still there. Mm -hmm. Even my intention was, because I'm not known in St. Lucia, to go and look for work. My mother insists on my father, you're not going and work for somebody. By, just by hand, 
I'm talking, what I did in Trinidad. They insist I'm not going to leave the house and look for employment. They gave me a small house. They gave me a small house and they asked me to, the things I learned, because I used to do cupboards and, you know, yeah. very little stick stick things. I would, I would do, um, take a board, maybe 12 by 12, and run nails through it and one thread through it and create a bird, create. Yeah. Yeah, so very talent. And they gave me that house and that's where more knowledge came in because I was self-employed in there. Okay, you know? so from there, what, what happened? So, I'm always believing in doing well. It's just natural. I always believe, and I always believe the second job um, is a more interesting job than the one that I just finished. Mm -hmm. So I'm always looking forward to do better. Um, after this thing, I got, I got a job with, with, with Care. Care was building, I think, which one? Care was building sandals, I think. I got a job there as a, as a supervisor. When Care finished the project, most of the tool, no, sorry, it was Higgs and Hill I worked for, um, building the power station in Kaldisa. That's the new power station. Um, I was working with them, and then I was the scaffold erector for the company. I started as a scaffold erector for the power station. By the time the project was halfway, I was so good in what I was doing, they decided they will move me away from the scaffold erector, give me more men, but have me to see more things. So I start all the big um, commercial doors and, and the elevator doors and all these doors. Mm. I was the one responsible to put them up. I know you, you, you I mean, I mean you, you have been at numerous experiences and, uh, and, and so on, but Starting off your business, I, 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 from my own experience, I can recall you uh, establishing an office in Marigo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to tell us a yeah. little bit about that? The office in Marigo, um, well, if, you, if you're in business, you need a place where people can find you. Hence the reason I decided to start my first office. Um, I got the piece of land from, from um, Mr. Albert, who's the fireman in that corner there, and I built this office there. The idea was to sustain myself because St. Lucia, sometimes you need something and you cannot get it. Mm -hmm. So instead of every one thing you, you, you're looking for, you have to run through the hardware, I build the office a little size, a little sizable that I will buy more. So if I want one thing, I buy five. So tomorrow if I need it, I have some. So we, we build a small hardware together with the office. And that was a brilliant idea. That perhaps may have led to your first... Um, um, experience as 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 a as a construct a, a builder and so on. Um, I I I am not sure, but perhaps you can guide me. Um, the Jack Mel Church. Um, we need to take a break. I've been told, but let's focus when we get back okay. on the Jack Mel Church. This is issues and answers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to be heard. This means that every consumer who is dissatisfied with a good or service has the right to lodge a complaint to the provider of that good or that service. This should be the first point of lodging a complaint. Ensure that the receipt, as proof of the transaction, is available. Welcome back. This is Issues and Answers. Our guest is Mr. Steve Jimson of Jim Coast Quality Construction Limited. Um, we were the Jack Bell Church. I think mm -hmm. that this might have been your first project. My uh, first major project. Major or? project. Okay. The Jack Mel Church was in the range of um, as the Catholic Church, the, Catholic the Holy Church Family Church. Yeah. Was in the range of I think somewhere like six hundred thousand dollars. That was at the time. That would be the biggest project I ever did. Um, Father Sandros, who's a very good friend of mine today, I love him today just like I loved him yesterday because yeah. of what he did. Yeah. Father Sandros trusts me and he, from what he's seen and he heard, he believed that I was the right suitable guy to do the project of that nature. Okay. The project was a very challenging project. You know, um, that St. Omer 
Yeah, the mural. The mural inside there. We, we extend the project by a couple meters on, on both sides, create a new facade, a new wall. Yet still, we had to maintain the mural inside without damaging it and, and, and make it part of the, of the new project. I think when that's done, both St. Tome and Father St. Rose gave James Cobb, at that time, Jameson Construction Enterprise, um, quite a bit of phrases or um, how we handle our, ourselves on that. <laughs> but that was a very successful project. But have you had any other uh, project done in the Jack Work as far as giving your services <coughs> excuse me, to the, to the community? community? What, what other services as a, as a, as a boy from the, from the... I think we did small, small, small works, um, yeah. like cupboards and, and small things. In fact, I, which, I, which I didn't tell you, but ja the first project I did in Jack Mill was I was a farmer. I was working with um, Moses Henry yeah. um, farming, and that was the first work I did. After the farming, then I realized that the farming wouldn't sustain us. Then I go to the, to the construction. Okay. You also established an apartment um, in the community. That's very, very good, very commendable. Um, Tell us about a little bit about how you went about what this, you could have built this apartment anywhere else in, in this country. Yeah. Again, is love for love for country, love for area, love for where you come from. Lots of people tell me if you have this apartment in the north, you would be making so much money. But what happened to Jack Mill? I mean, I want to see Jack Mill have life. I want to see Jack Mel looking good. So you drive up the road, you see this apartment. Wow, that's a nice apartment. Instead of everybody seeing Jack Mel like a, a down, a low, if God bless me and I have money, I would really do something nice in Jack Mel. That's well taken. Um, let's, take, let's fast forward a little bit about your experiences with some of the other projects, I mean, Sandals, um, your management team and so on. Let's quickly run through this yeah. because we we, uh, time is of yeah. the essence. Again, um, it's the blessing. I believe I'm blessed. I believe I'm coming out from a family of, of 13 of us, and I did extremely well by hiring. Even my father was working for me. My mother worked for me. My father worked for me. All my siblings have been working for me. And I know we did the same thing. We came from the same background. We did everything the same. So I feel I'm blessed. And your, foc your business focus saw the, the potential in you, and you, yeah. you, made it, you made the front page of business focus. Of course, yes. Uh, yes. And how, how did you feel about this? Very good, um, very good. But let's go back to, to the establishment and people I have working for me. Um, our, from our office in Marigo, and now we are, we are in Cul-de-Sac, um, opposite Massey Supermarket and, and West Indies Shipping, somewhere in that area there. Um, our office have about 12 staff, from accountant to project manager, engineers, you name it. We, we have had a good time working for some serious business people around, such as Mr. Sheriki, that I'm doing one of the most outstanding buildings in St. Lucia today, I should say. Um, we work for Sandals, we did some massive project for Sandals. We did the Sunset Bluff for Sandals that, that was in the 2000, 2000, which I was quite a young man still. Um, and it came out successful. We have a guy, um, Mark Harding was the project manager for Sandals. And Mark would tell you today how he take young Steve and the result of young Steve. If, so if, he feels so proud of me today by what he have seen and what he's keep seeing. We, we've not touched on some of the challenges. I mean, starting yeah. a, big, a business of, of this magnitude and getting to this. What, what have been the, the, the challenges and successes? You know? Let's go on challenges. Um, most times, I believe that for some reason, the locals not getting it, what they should. Um, even though you have all that beautiful project you have done, but when you go to the bank, <laughs> like I always say, I could go to Miami, take a guy on the street, um, give him a suitcase, and send him to the bank. 
he might get a better result from the bank than me, who's the CEO for the company. Well, I just go and, uh, you know. True. Get a okay. guy from the street in Miami, yeah. dress him, and send him to the bank. He might be getting the money that I want to get. So most time we do feel that um, they're looking at us the way we should. We're not getting the kind of opportunity. So something I could have done maybe within five years from this level to that level, it might take me 10 years because I have to work harder to achieve it when the bank maybe would not trust us to give us their money. Because from the level we are today, I believe that for me, sky is the limit. There is no such project that we cannot do, but yet still you see in that people are doing projects that they're not, they cannot even handle the project, but they're getting the opportunity mm -hmm. to get the project. How happy are you that you've contributed to St. Lucia's development? In, uh, in, uh, I'm the happiest man you can find. Um, looking at, walking around, seeing my, my projects, um, seeing the people that we develop. And this and is something Contributing I, to employment. Yeah, but I'm one of those who take the most young men from the, from the month and train them to be contractors. If any, I always tell them, if anything happens to me tomorrow, you all will, when you all go to, like I died, you all will go to that cemetery and you all will laugh, have a good laugh and say, this guy was something else because of how I train them, and all of them today are contractors. And my business going on smoothly without those that I train. Off and on, they will come, depending what I'm doing, they will pass and see me. But my business is going well without those that I train. Those I train, I believe I train you, you're good enough, move. Mr. Jameson, we've come to the end of our discussion, but just briefly, quickly, what would you like to say to the St. Lucian public? And, and just wind up quickly. In yeah. Um, Especially my area in Jack Mill. I wish that um, we would, these young people, would, they will look at them closely because I think they need opportunity. Um, all the boys we have that are doing all the bad things is because of lack of, uh, lack of opportunity, lack of making them feel that they are important. Okay. I think well, we our, need, to, we need yeah. to, yeah, sorry about that, but we need to wind down. We appreciate so much you taking the time to be with us, Mr. Jimson, and uh, all of your accomplishments and challenges. I've been speaking with Mr. Steve Jimson, the founder and chief executive officer of James Cobb, James Cobb Quality Construction Limited. This has been Issues and Answers. I'm Primus Hutchinson. Thank you, dear, for viewing. Well,